Okay, what's up, Adver2? Sorry this, this video took a little long getting to you. I want to encourage you to go and make sure you study through this lesson. Um, I'm just giving some examples to kind of supplement um, so you can kind of see how these are worked out, but I do want to encourage you to go through, and especially where it where it shows you the models. Let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, kind of like where they model... Um, just these are just the basic the basic laws of uh, radicals here, and then they they if you scroll down they actually give you examples of what those look like with with real numbers. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and jump into this. This first, I'm gonna we're gonna go through several of these. Okay, so just just bear with me. Um, okay, so we have the the radicand. Okay, and then you have the index here. Okay, so this is a whenever whenever you don't see an expressed index, it's it's understood to be that's that's understood to be a, a two right there. Okay, hence the the name square root, right? Um, so since we have the same index in each one of these, we can just the way this works, we can just this has a coefficient of of one, right? Okay, so we can just multiply our coefficients. So it's going to be two, and then we'll multiply our our uh, our radicands together, so two to the sixth power. So that how that works. Okay. All right. So start off pretty pretty simple there. Next one's next couple here are pretty simple as well. So in in this one they're going to have you they they want you to rewrite this um, as an exponent. Okay. So you get your radicand here as x, and x is being raised to the third power. So x is going to be our base. The power that it's being raised to is going to be the numerator, so it's going to be a fractional exponent, and then the index is the denominator. Okay, so that's x to the three fifths power. All right, so same same uh, same thing here. This is y. All right, so it's being raised. This y is being raised to the second power, so that's going to be the the numerator, and then this has an understood index of two, so that's y to the two over two, which is y to the first, which is just y. Okay. Now they're having us go backwards and uh, write rewrite this from from going going from a fractional exponent to a radical. All right. So again, that's going to be y. And remember, the numerator is the power that the radicand is being raised to, and the denominator is the is the index. Okay. All right. So now, now let's look at this one. This one's a little more involved here. All right. So we can take, uh, if you go back and study those, those rules that I was just showing you, then you'll know that we can take this and we can make this negative 27. We can write this as a, as a radical expression, right? And, uh, this is going to be, okay. This tells us that this is going to be a cubed root. Okay, and then this tells me that this is being raised to the second power. Okay. All right, now, so there, there's a way that we can kind of play with this and manipulate this so that we can so we can sim make it simple. Okay. Um, so you know how cubed roots and square roots work, right? I mean, so, so for example, you know, if we have um, we have 144, all right. The square root of 144, you know to be 12. Well, why, why do you know it to be 12? Well, because you're taking 12 and you're using it as a factor two times, right? Well, that matches this here, right? Okay, so it's same deal when, you, when you've got, um, uh, you know, say 27, for example. And we're going to go to the cubed root of 27. Well, now we're looking for a factor that – one factor uh, that can be used just like uh, we have 12 here, 12 times 12. Well, we can – over here, we can take 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, so 9 times 3 is 27. So it's being – we have one factor, okay, being multiplied, okay, 3 times here. Hence the cubed root. So the cubed root of 27. Well, what factor of 27 can be used uh, as a factor three times to give us 27? 
well, three. So the cube root of 27 is three, right? And it would be the same way if we put an index of four, we were just saying, okay, what is there a factor of this number that can be uh, factored out four times to give us that, right? Okay, so if you look at this, we can actually rewrite this as that right there. Okay. All right. So now what that does, that, that allows me to work with this right here as a, as a, as a perfect cube. Okay. So, so what do we get when we, okay, we know that the, the perfect cube of negative 27 is negative three, right? So negative three times negative three times negative three. Well, this gives us positive 9 times negative 3 gives us negative 27. Okay, so so this actually is a perfect cube, which is why we did this in the first place. So now we can work with this. Instead of having to worry about, you know, negative 27 squared, we can pull that squared out here and deal with this as a perfect cube. So this is negative 3. All of this right here simplifies to negative 3. And we've got negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Okay? So that's how, we, that's how we deal with that one. Okay, how about this one? How about this one? So, so we can just kind of study it for a second. All right, and think about how we can write this as a radical, as a radical expression. Right? Okay, so this can be rewritten as... Hang on, Evie. Hang on, guys. Hang on just one second. My daughter. Evelyn Joy. Okay. So... So this can be written... Right now it's... Okay, so we start off with 27 over 8 to the four-thirds power, okay? So if you go back and, and study your those rules that we were, that I was telling you about at the beginning, okay, so we can we can rewrite this whole thing here, right? So remember this, this is gonna be the power that it's raised to, and this is the index, okay? All right, now, there's another rule here that says that we can actually break up this, we can break this fraction up right here, and we can break this into the cubed root of 27 over the cubed root of 8, and bring all of this to the fourth power. Again, you're going to need to go back and study study the examples of how, how they do that. But there's a rule that says that we can do that. We can break this fraction up into the cubed root of 27 over the cubed root of 8, all raised to the fourth power. Okay. Well, the cool thing about this one is that both 27 and 8 are both perfect cubes. Okay. So the perfect cube of 27, we already know to be 3, Perfect, the perfect cube of 8 is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. And this is being raised to the fourth power. So this is the same thing. We can rewrite this as 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 times 3 over 2 times 3 over 2. Okay? And then just multiply. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. I think our puppy's getting a bath over here. All right, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. Okay, and that's how we deal with, with that one. Okay, one more example real quick. Okay, 25 to the 5 over 2 
power of 5 over 2. Okay? All right, so remember, we're going to take 25. We're going to rewrite this as a radical expression. All right, so we've got that's going to be the power that it's raised to, that, that the radicand is raised to, and then the denominator is, is that right there? Okay. Now, again, based on a problem that we've already done, how can we kind of manipulate this to make it, instead of having to worry about 25 to the fifth power, that's a lot of math to do, 25 times 25 times 25 times 25. Okay, instead of that, I recognize that 25 has a perfect square. So let's, let's rewrite this. Let's rewrite this as square root of 25 raised to the fifth power. Okay? So that allows me to deal with this as just a, as just a square root, which is 5. And I'm going to raise that 5 to the fifth power. That's a lot easier to me. I would rather raise 5 to the 5th power than have to multiply 25 out times uh, five, 25 uh, out 5 times. Okay, so, so 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, it's going to be a big number, right? So we got 25 times 5 is 125. 125 times 5 is an even bigger number. And then that number times 5. Okay, so I think this is one of your ignition lessons. And... Uh, you, you know this is going to be a bit. Of, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you take the time to, to multiply that out on your own time. All right. Uh, but again, go ahead and and make sure you study the examples out. I just wanted to give you some supplemental uh, guidance here by way of doing a few examples. I hope this has been a help to you, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you uh, on Monday. Okay. All right. Take care.